One of the really important things that's coming out of, out of research for early education is to rethink our conceptualizations sometimes of math learning. Um, and many teachers already know this, but not necessarily I think all parents and all members of the general public, that early math learning is not just about arithmetic and that arithmetic builds on a set of underlying skills that can be strengthened way before children enter the former classroom, where parents and early childhood educators can play a critical role in helping children to understand numerical symbols, the relationship between numerical symbols and sets, the relationship between numerical and non-numerical variables such as size, density of arrays. And I think there's a lot that we can do that's actually not so difficult. We can learn a lot from what we've learned in reading reading development, about building blocks, about taking things apart, and about understanding constituent processes. So I think that's, that's something that research is already telling us today. Everybody understands that reading to your children is going to facilitate the development of their literacy skills, but I don't think home numeracy is something that parents necessarily always think about. The, the, the simple activities that you can do in the home when you lay the table, you know, count the knives and forks, make sure that there are the same number of knives and forks on one side of the table as the other side of the table. And there's beautiful work at the University of Chicago showing that the amount of number talk in a home is directly correlated with the kinds of insights that children make about numbers. For example, uh, children who have more number talk in their home early on make that insight that counting gets you sets, that count, counting is for enumerating sets, they make that insight earlier than children with relatively less um, uh, number talk in the home. It's been shown that playing board games, uh, using you know rolling dice and using numbers and moving certain uh, spaces up the board and then going back, helps children understand number relationships and also helps them to understand space as a metaphor for number, right? Being able to position things, numerical relationships within spatial continua, such as number lines. Does a calculator help for a student who has developmental dyscalculia? I do wonder whether it prevents students with developmental dyscalculia working on strategies to improve their ability to encode facts into long-term memory. Um, I think it can be important, more research needs to be done on it, but if you've got a very persistent difficulty in math, I could imagine for an adult dyscalculic, of course, you know, it's, it's very important. But at the age of acquisition in early elementary school, perhaps there is also the ability to at least find some compensatory strategies that help dyscalculic children, even if they can't develop the fluency piece, at least to understand, to get some understanding of magnitude, conceptual understanding of, of arithmetic. In developmental dyscalculia research, it's unclear whether they struggle with dot comparison as well as number symbol comparison or both. And that's theoretically very important because if they struggle with dot comparison, you can talk about some kind of innate deficit. Whilst if they struggle just with number symbols, it's really in the developmental process of mapping those two systems. Um, and I would simply say watch this space. It's very controversial at the moment. Certainly, everybody struggles with dot comparison when you have, let's say, a very two very large um, dots and then six very small dots because there's a conflict between the size um, and the number because helping children to, to focus on number over and above other correlated variables I think can sharpen their sense of number because in everyday life Number is correlated when we see sets, not with symbols, but when we see sets of items, when we go grocery shopping. There is always multiple cues when, you know, when I decide how many uh, oranges I want to buy, I might exactly enumerate them or I might say, this is enough for me and I haven't counted them. So I've used size information. But we need to disentangle all of these multiple cues in order to get into number. And I think one critical step in early number development is drawing children's attention to the numerical dimension of sets. The literature on 
Subitizing deficits in dyscalculia is a little bit unclear. Most adults, if we see two or three or four, we just know it's four. There's no calculation involved. There's no shifts of attention involved. It's just we know the, that that's four. And for some children who struggle with math difficulties, that's also the case. But it's, it's not a clear-cut story, the link between subitization and math difficulties. In subitizing, we can arrange arrays either in a canonical way or in a non-canonical way. The canonical way would be like the patterns on a dice, when you roll a dice. So you have a three sort of arranged like this, and then four, you know, like that, and then five with just a dot in the middle. And non-canonical would just be random. Adults and kids both, both find it easier to process the canonically arranged shapes compared to the non-canonically arranged shapes. And I think that has to do with the fact that canonically arranged shapes almost become like a symbol. When you see four in that pattern, you know it's four. There's no additional process required. You don't need to enumerate. So you could imagine that kids with developmental dyscalculia are much better at that because it's less about number now. It's more about recognizing a shape that you've learned over and over again when you play, you've learned that's four, that's five. But is that really then the same as being able to apply enumeration skills to a more randomly organized array? So that's, that's, that's an important question, I think, to ask whether it's just be, the children have learned that this is, that this is four, uh, versus being able to apply their enumeration skills to any arrangement of four.